today. Uh, we want to welcome home one of our four parish seminarians. Troy Bodman is here today with us. He's back home for Christmas, so uh, welcome home, Troy. Thank you. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, so that we may prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. of the Lord's nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our gods. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. According to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question. Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to him in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent, or as it's often referred to, Gaudete Sunday, which means a Latin word for let us rejoice. And so we're rejoicing that we're getting closer to, uh, to Christmas. And so we light the third candle and we wear the rose-colored uh, vestments, not pink, 
A couple of people walked in and said, oh, it's pink day, but rose. In fact, our seminarian Troy told me something he had learned in seminary. He said, they learned, I guess it's a joke, he said, uh, Jesus did not pink from the dead, he rose from the dead. So there you go, Troy. <laughs> I will never forget many, 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 many years ago when I was in high school, I had a math teacher who was trying to remind us time and time again of the virtue of patience. And he had a saying that he would say often to the class. He said, patience is a virtue seldom found in men and hardly with women. Well, he was not the most politically correct person in the world, but certainly I think that phrase could easily be changed to patience is seldom found in anyone. We are not overall a patient people. I know I'm becoming rapidly impatient that I've had this upper respiratory thing for three weeks now, and it's not going away. But patience is something we have to have. And so in the second reading today, which is a beautiful reading from James, James reminds us to be patient. But he also acknowledges the difficulty of being patient. Now, the world in which we live does not lend itself to being patient because certainly all the electronic devices have only made us less patient. Now we can send someone an email or a text and get a quick, immediate response, where in the old days we would have to send a letter and then wait days or weeks for a response. And some of us are even old enough to remember when you would send the old Western Union telegram and the telegram person delivery person would come knocking at the door with a little yellow telegram. Well, patience is also one of those things, let's face it, we can lose with God. We think, oh, I've prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed for something, and it doesn't happen. That can cause us to get impatient, or it doesn't happen on our time. Well, this year's Advent readings give us a lot of advice on how to live and be ready for the Lord, to repent, being ready to welcome the Lord in our hearts, and then today we hear about the virtue of patience. Now, we all know that patience can make life a lot easier, and there's times when you just have to be patient and say it is what it is. Not too long ago, I went to the post office, and there was one of the seven windows that the post office has constructed, only but one was open and staffed by someone. And there was well over, I think, 20, 25 people in line. And so I'd stood in line for close to 25 or 30 minutes. I got up to the front only to be told, oh, sir, that is the wrong form. You're gonna have to go back and fill out the right form and to wait in the line again. Well, I was not very patient about that, but I had no choice. Prayer is, like I said, it's one of the hardest things to be patient about because God answers prayers on God's time, not ours. And it moves at a totally different front time frame, centuries, not minutes. James also reminds us not to complain. Well, complaining is, is a part of not being patient, really. And I read an article a couple of years ago that said, we are perhaps the most complaining people in the history of salvation. Of course, people have always complained, but we seem to do it better than any other generation. And the reason, I think, for that is because our expectations are higher. We're more impatient. And when things don't live up to those, our expectations, then we complain. I know a school principal and a priest in another diocese who both have signs over their doors that says, Complaint Department. And someone came up to me after the last Mass and said, I used to work at the Oklahoma City Complaint Department for years, and it was no fun. Well, in the old days, when there was kind of that distance between priests and school administrators and people like that and everyone else, there was a lot less complaining, at least out, outwardly. But certainly times have changed and people are more accessible. Now, of course, this only applies to you because I never complain in my entire life. Well, of course, that would not be true. That would have to be confessed. I complain a lot. And if you think about it, there's an old saying, lies beget lies, lies make more lies. Complaints beget complaints. Because the more complaints we hear around us, then the more frustration we get over things not 
going the way we want or we can't control, and so we complain. And even as kids at a young age, we learn to complain. But of course, nowadays, we complain because we're experts at everything, thanks to Google search and things like that. I was talking to a doctor the other day, and she was telling me how now patients complain more than ever because they will have already Googled the information about what they have when they come in, figured out the treatment, and tell them, well, just write me this, and I'll be good. And the doctor says, well, no, that's, that's not the case. Well, then people complain. Well, that's not what Google said. Well, all that stuff makes us less patient. Cell phones make us less patient because we want people accessible 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we are. Now, I, I am not the most patient person, but let's be honest. When any of us are not patient, it only makes life more stressful for us and certainly for those around us that we're not being patient with. James also reminds us to be careful about judging, that there is one judge and it is not us. The happiest people I have known are people that are patient and they're kind and they're not judgmental. Now think about it, God gives us an, um, huge amounts of patience because he knows that we're not always gonna do things exactly the way he wants or on his timetable. He may call us to something and we may never answer it or it may take a long time. And we also sometimes, you know, we can be hard on each other. But think about it. Think about the patience that Jesus shows with us. That's our model. Now, like I've said before, and I just said it, the internet, I think, and modern technology has made us less patient. And then it's made complaining easy and we get a voice for our complaints. So many social media postings and blogs are all about people complaining about things. You can even give a Yelp review to a church. Don't go out and do it, because I'll be looking. But, um, <laughs> but then, you know, people complain about all kinds of things, and then they pronounce judgments on people and situations. We're certainly seeing that this year, especially with all the political upheaval and all the stuff that's gone on in the church. Not only do we complain, but like I said, electronic media gives us a huge big audience for our complaints. I was looking at a hotel site not too long ago and reading the reviews of the hotel, and the complaints ranged from, well, there was a light bulb burned out, all the way to there were bed bugs. Well, that's a big difference. And a lot of the reviews were, oh, it was the greatest place we ever stayed. Well, we all know some complaints are legitimate, while others are not. Some are based on facts, some are based on rumors. Now, of course, our complaints are always valid and other people's are not, at least in our own minds. Well, we know this time of the year being, brings many blessings, but also a certain amount of stress. And it leads to many complaints because maybe we haven't got everything we need finished. Things don't turn out the way we think that they should. We have it in our mind what Christmas should be like. Well, patience is a blessing and one that when we develop makes, us not, makes not only our faith life better, but our lives and everybody around us lives better. Sometimes we just have to be taught a good old fashioned lesson in how to be patient. One of the best lessons that I ever saw someone get taught about patience, and it resonated with me too, was several years ago, I was at the Atlanta airport and, and changing planes, which is mostly what you do in Atlanta. And the flight was delayed, and it kept being delayed and delayed and delayed. And of course, everyone in the gate area was grumbling about it. No one was happy. But there was this one particular guy, and he kept, you know, when you're in the gate, you can watch all the kind of drama that's going on. This one guy, he kept going up to the gate agent and back, up and back, up and back, and just chewing the, the woman behind the counter out over the flight delay. Well, she had absolutely no control over that and the fact that there was thunderstorms in the area. So finally, after a few minutes, I think she just had had it with him and everybody else complaining. So this guy kept saying, do you know who I am? Do you realize who I am? And so this lady, she grabbed the microphone, ready, like you say, when you're ready to board. She said, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen in the gate, I have an announcement. We all thought, oh, it's time to get on. She said, this gentleman would like everyone to know who he is. And his name is blah, 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 and let's give him a round of applause. And so she made everyone clap for this guy. Well, he turned 
beet red, not rose, but red. And I actually did hear him apologize. And I thought, you know, that was a good lesson for that guy and for all of us who were thinking about going up to the desk and complaining. Well, patience is indeed a virtue, but it's only a virtue if we use it. There's another good quotation that says, good things come to those who wait. And there's truth to that. Many good things will come to us from the Lord. But the question is, are we willing to wait? Or are we going to not be patient and then take matters into our own hands? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers to the Lord. For the church, that we may recognize the presence and action of God in the loving and merciful deeds around us and be open to God's invitation to, accept, to extend the reign of God through our words and deeds, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, as he celebrates 50 years as a priest and his birthday, that God will continue to bless him and draw the church to greater faith and unity under his leadership. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of Congress, that the Spirit will guide their work and help them to recognize the truth in all the issues before them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of patience, that God will help us to trust so that we may wait through various challenges and allow God to show us a new path to proceed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle with doubt, who question if Jesus is the one, that their eyes and hearts may be open to the marvelous things which God does within and around them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Jerry Klein and Brian Root, and for all who mourn them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And in silent prayer, let us now mention our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Almighty God, we ask you to hear these prayers and those that we hold within our hearts. Continue to show us your mercy and your love, and we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day 
may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Venus in Celi et Terra Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis, Benedictus qui veniti Domine, Most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who, holding on to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gift that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us are through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. <coughs> Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, Bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
If you brought donations of school supplies for the uh, Giving Sunday, you can place those <laughs> under the Advent tree in the foyer. Uh, again this weekend, the Scouts will be selling turkeys and hams after Mass. Uh, Caroling to the Homebound will begin this evening. We'll have dinner at 5.30 in the atrium and then uh, head out immediately after that. Also, there is a baptismal seminar for new uh, parents who would like to have their children baptized, and that will be at 4 o'clock today uh, in the formal room. And now, let us say the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, the rest of the hell of Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Blessed Stanley Rother, pray for us. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.